Come on in, gravel friends. Come on in, road friends, so collectively I can say hello, Grodio friends, and welcome to episode five of Grodio. Uh, th- this is another Zach and Amanda production. They are bringing you the power rankings, and Zach did an awesome job laying down the theme song when he actually starts the episode, but I had to jump in here before, and it sounds naked without any music. I... I I feel like I've lost my crutch, so I'm just gonna just gonna add a little bit of funk under here while that starts to ramp up. I'm gonna tell you about Whoop, and that is our sponsor here on the Wide Angle Podium, which Rodeo is part of in the parts bin. And Whoop is our sponsor. Whoop is a performance tool. It is a wearable. You get the Whoop 3.0 strap. You put it on your wrist. You go out for that gravel ride, and it's going to record 100 times per second your heart rate 24 7. you don't have to be riding that long unless you want to i mean i know those dk 350 people are doing that i know that's not the name i'm the noob i don't get these things right uh but yeah you got one of those on you're gonna have a strain score that's out of this world and what the whoop band's gonna do is gonna record that it's gonna record your recovery your sleep it's gonna say give you this little traffic light monitoring system where you that you get the green and you're like hey you are ready to go get out there and crush it you get the yellow and it's like all right you know you've been going hard lately you may want to just ease up a little bit so you can perform your best and then you get the red and that, that's uh you know that's when there's like uh hey hey buddy time to take it easy working a little hard there you're not going to be going as at your best you're going to start wearing yourself down you're going to start overtraining Take a day off. It's okay. It's cool. We got you covered. The thing on your wrist says it's okay. And that's the whoop band. And it's, it's got your best interests uh, at, at, in, in, in mind. What we do over at uh, Wide Angle Podium is that we give you a 15% off deal on a year or 18 month subscription for whoop. Use my code. Bill's code. CX Hairs. Go over to whoop.com, put in CX Hairs, and get that 15% off on the Whoop band. Once this show moves out of the parts bin, which I know it's going to do soon, it's going to get its own slot because y'all are listening, you're telling your friends, the feedback's been awesome, Grodio will be on its own, then we'll make, maybe we'll get a Grodio coupon for Whoop and our other sponsors. But for now, whoop.com. Put in CX hairs, get your 15% off. All right. Amanda Nauman, Zach Schuster, they, they say they're very nice and say that they want me to come back and be a part of this. And maybe the next time we record, we'll do that. But for now, they're crushing it. They don't need me. They're crushing it like gravel. This is the Power Rankings, Episode 5, and they're doing that right now. Amanda now, how are you? Hi Zach, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Are you are you ready for some Grodio power rankings? I am. I hope we will do Bill Shiken some justice in our methodology, but yes, I'm ready. <laughs> so I think this is a first time power rankings of any kind, uh, kind of a first. You're going to be ranking yourself. How was that experience uh, knowing that you were going to have to place yourself on the continuum? Uh, I guess that's a spoiler alert that you made the power rankings, by the way. Um, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, I I pride myself in being a fan of the sport, whether it's cross or gravel. So I think you know it kind of just comes with the territory. But while my name is there, I'm also just a super fan of like everybody else that's on the list. So it's okay. <laughs> well, th- that's cool. Uh, so I guess we should cover uh, the events that uh, are going to be included in these power rankings. So what are some of the races that we're going to be looking at? So the first timer, that Oregon stage race, um, I don't even know how many days it was, but I just know that it was a first time event and I was pretty surprised and excited to see how many heavy hitters showed up to it. Um, So I gave it a bit of um, priority in the rankings. Uh, Michigan Coast to Coast, a 200 mile event uh, that was a few weeks after Dirty Kansas in June. 
the Hilly Billy Roubaix, which was the same weekend as Michigan, and Crusher and the Toucher, Toucher, which was a couple weekends ago, I believe. Um, So those are the four that we're adding into the mix of the rankings that you kind of threw together about a month ago or so. Yeah, and so last time I I just did math. Yeah. Uh, I made it it was very impartial. And so our power rankings are actually like a combination of of both of ours, mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting. You took more of a math approach uh this year is or for this one. Is that correct? Yeah, I did. I'm, you know, a very math brain. I kind of want to make sure the people who are up there and doing more of the races get priority. So I didn't want that to be um completely subjective. So I made it a little bit more quantitative. So I kind of more made shit up. Uh, I don't know if that's really allowed or not. Like I had like this, this kind of like algorithm that I made in my head. Um, Yeah. I think it was kind of an interesting situation. It was easy the first time around just to be like, all right, we're doing everything up through DK. Uh, But now we have, uh, you know, we have some new events, but we also kind of have the residual of some old events like DK lost and found, you know, even Belgian waffles still out there. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens between the two of us, uh, the math, which is probably more correct. Uh, and then what I made up and, uh, kind of winged it. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> my rank, like somewhere in my brain is like the, 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 the process that I could explain. Um, I mean, it's kind of like, I went with a little bit of a bias towards recent races, uh, as well as, you know, some of the past performances for people, especially who did well at lost and found in DK. Yeah. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, um, yeah, this is fun because, you know, when Bill does the mountain bike heat check, um, it's still, it feels like more of an established place where the same sort of riders and maybe like the top 20 are kind of all in the same route of planning their season and going to these events. And on this side of things, it's a little bit different and a lot more spread out. So, because there's nothing completely established, it makes it more fun to look at where people are going and why they're going there so yeah it's different (laughs) yeah well shall we get started yeah go for it uh so what we're going to do is i'm going to unveil the top 10 women uh and then just because we didn't want amanda to have to like you know talk about herself that'd be kind of (laughs) weird uh and then (laughs) she's gonna do uh the men uh and so basically these are like a mashup of what we came up with um so number 10 on the list kind of interesting uh maybe a bit lower than expected is allison tetrick uh, she finished, she still has that second at DK. Uh, and then she also did, did she do Oregon? I think she did Oregon, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, she did. She was, um, I'm pretty, oh, oh, she was ninth. Yeah. Ninth in Oregon. Yeah. So that one, like you said, had a lot of, of heavy hitters. Um, and I think in a way that kind of influences the, uh, like the quality of competition, right? Like with the cycle cross points or whatever with USA Cycling's uh, r- ranking system, their their weird, bizarre ranking system. <laughs> um, so she comes in at number ten. Uh, number nine is our newest Crusher champion uh, in Evelyn Dong. Uh, she's a mountain biker, uh, but she came out and crushed the Crusher. So be curious to see, you know, uh, she said that she definitely is not very interested in the Midwest uh, kind of rides, um, but it would be interesting to see what she could do there, um, you know, uh, to see how she could do across cross events, you know, do multiple events and see how you stack up. Um, you know, as a competitor, what are your thoughts on some of these uh Oh, come ringers, you know, the people that aren't necessarily always doing the scene, you know, what do you, how do you approach having them in the field and, you know, accounting for them? Oh, no, it's great. I mean, I think it elevates the level of competition. Evelyn's really good short track. She's a really good um, XC racer. So it it was cool to see. I didn't know how she was going to do at Crusher, but I think she lives in Utah, if I'm not mistaken, if not Colorado. So, you know, she's probably a little bit more accustomed to that environment in terms of altitude and whatnot. So it was cool to see her win. Um, it's really fun for me to see some of those heavy hitters on the mountain bike side or roadside or whatever come and, you know, get thrown into the mix. Like when I did Chino Grinder for the first time, which is a gravel event in Arizona, I went because Chloe Woodruff had gone and won it like the two years prior and I was like oh this is awesome I'm gonna see I'm gonna do against Chloe so it's cool for you know everyday people to come and see how they're gonna rank up against the pros which they might not necessarily get to race with on on at a regular event 
yeah, yeah, and definitely from our standpoint, it certainly keeps things interesting uh, yeah. and fresh. And, uh, you know, we get to talk about ringers. That's always yeah, fun, exactly. uh, fun to throw in the mix. Uh, so I will say, like, the next three people, we our ranking systems had a little bit of a dig- disagreement on. Uh, we kind of went polar opposite on some of them. And so they all kind of came together uh, in the middle. Uh, so this will be kind of interesting. But coming in at number eight is Serena Gordon. She finished second at the, it was a five-day uh, Omnium or five-day stage race in Oregon. Uh, she came in second in the Omnium uh, behind Rebecca Ferringer. Uh, spoiler alert, might be on the rankings coming up here. Uh, and then she also, I think she also finished second at Lost and Found. Um, so she's had a couple solid West Coast uh, results. Uh, and I believe she races some Masters Cyclocross, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I guess I should probably look that up, but. Oh, it was good to see cyclocross folks, uh, you know, doing well in the gravel scene. Uh, number seven, uh, someone you know really well, uh, Kai Takashida. Uh, she comes in at seventh. Uh, her big result was second place at Michigan. Uh, so what's that been like? You and Kai know each other pretty well from racing against one another at this point. Yeah. Uh, what was what was Michigan like uh, racing against her and? facing off i know she was on aero bars and you, you don't use aero bars <laughs> yeah. uh yeah it was fun i mean it kai has i think grown up with the scene a little bit with me as well because uh, when i came to dirty kansas for the second time i think it was her first year and i remember going up uh texaco hill and this was the first time i had like ever interacted with her and she was like doing this really slow cadence up this hill and i went by her and i was like you should pick up the cadence. <laughs> like I, I will always remember that moment because I was like, I really, I'm not trying to be rude. I just was like trying to help her because I, I thought that, you know, it would be some sort of tip that would help her in the future. But you know, ever since then, she's like been kicking my butt and getting a lot better in the results. So it's been fun to see her progress in the articles that you've done with her for Cyclocross Magazine. Um, she's a really great person. Her story is awesome. So it's a really good um, mix up to like the normal pro racer. So she's, she's a really fun character to have in the mix. Yeah. Well, you've created a monster in a way. I know. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I will say if we were doing like nicest people on the gravel scene, just like best human beings, like it would obviously be a challenge, but Kai would definitely be a favorite, at least for the top five. Like she's just such a nice, genuine, wonderful person. Um, who somehow manages to always be like in, in, smiling in a great mood, no matter like how, you know, even though she just did Dirty Kanza, it's like, she's great. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and I found out that she, she said later that she didn't ride at all between Dirty Kanza and Michigan. And I was like, what? So I, it was funny because I went into it thinking like, she's probably going to beat me because she had an amazing season up to DK. Like her result at land run and everything was phenomenal. And she just took a little bit of a break and did Michigan for fun. And so I was kind of thrown for a loop on that one. But yeah, it was, it's always fun to line up with her because I really never know what I'm going to (laughs) get. Yeah. Yeah. And I forgot she also finished fourth at DK. Uh, Another good result. So, (laughs) uh, so number, number six, uh, Amy Charity, uh, coming in, she she had a rough day at DK. She had like eight flats or something like that, but mm-hmm. I think she still ended up finishing right behind you. So I think she finished seventh or eighth at DK. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then she had a really good race at the Crusher. I think she finished in the top five there. Uh, so that moves her into the sixth spot of the power rankings. Um, and I believe she's going to be quite busy. I think she's one of the organizers for Steamboat coming up, which will be a part of probably what would be the final Grodio power rankings for the season when we move to cycle cross uh, because hashtag cross is coming Mm -hmm. uh (laughs) so we'll be hearing uh, a bit more from her uh number five kind of interesting one uh katarina nash uh she won lost and found Uh, does some you know gravel races near her home uh, but then she turned around and i think the week after uh dk and lost and found she had a battle with amity rockwell who's the queen of Kanza. So that one was kind of an interesting story, right? The lost and found winner against the DK winner. Oh yeah. Uh, Yeah. um, So that one snuck in as a race that I included um, to give Katarina some naps, Katarina some love. Uh, Yeah. It was a quiet one that was kind of cool. Like if you follow the scene, you're like, Oh, those two are going against each other like two weekends after. Yeah. Well, what had happened is the year before it was the Sagan dirt fondo. Uh, that took place at the time of Tour California. And so, you know, it got a lot of attention because, I don't know, people kind of like that Peter Sagan guy. 
Um, <laughs> uh, so it was a little bit more low key because they had to delay it because like I guess they had like uh, Snowmageddon uh, in May in 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 the Sierras, and so that's kind of what ended up happening oh, with that yeah, event. Yeah, they had to push it back. Yeah. Yeah, but if it had like P- Pito's name uh, attached to it, I'm guessing we probably would have known a bit more about it. Uh, number four, you might know this person, Amanda Nauman. Oh, weird. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, even though, like, kind of a rough DK, but you still finished sixth. Like, it was a yeah. very respectable result against a stacked field. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you turned around and you got some redemption. You went to Michigan Coast and Coast, turned in sixth place overall, which is super impressive. Um, but your time was just phenomenal. Uh, beat Kai, who was uh, one of your neighbors on the... Uh, the power rankings so fourth place yeah yeah i won't thanks. make a comment on that <laughs> <laughs> no comment no comment <laughs> um number three so now we're getting into the top three uh where it gets kind of interesting um someone that you know well that we all know well from cross rebecca Ferringer jumped in the gravel scene uh was kind of a little unsure on how to do that you know that oregon trail race because like we could have given points for each stage win we could have given points for the omnium but uh she won she may have won every stage uh of that race i forget but she definitely won at least like four of them and won the omnium going away uh so she did quite well and I was given, I saw her at Montana cross camp and I was giving her, um, I was telling her that she needs to do more gravel and I hope she agreed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it usually, it meant, that's what I say about cross. It like fits in for the cross racers. So I think she should also. Yeah. So, uh, you can give her a hard time uh, when you see her in Rochester, which is uh, not a hard time. Encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you did so well. You should yeah. keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, the article that we did, um, like the nutrition hydration stuff that you wrote. Oh yeah, and yeah. We sent in stuff. She sent me a message and was like, "Oh, I need to use this for Oregon." I was like, "Oh, awesome!" <laughs> so, you're just creating all these curious. monsters around you. Yeah. You're like everyone's coming to you. You're just like spawning really good gravel racers to like yes. make it harder for you. Yeah. I think oh, you're doing yeah. this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever, it makes it more fun to talk about. <laughs> for sure. Uh, number two is our queen of Kanza, Amity Rockwell. Uh, winning Dirty Kanza, as you as you know, is a very tough accomplishment uh, and something to hang your hat on. And then she also finished, I did a poor job of writing these down, but I think she finished fifth or so at the Crusher. And she also did pretty well, top 10, at that Oregon Trail race. Uh, so she had a lot of really good results uh, in recent time, as well as kind of like the, the carryover ones from before. So number two, uh, down a spot. I think she was number one on the previous Grodio power rankings. So that means our number one, and this is, we actually, this was the, the, the pick that we both agreed on our, our methods. I'm not saying like, you actually didn't have a method. You just had math. I made shit up um, <laughs> in agreement. Um, but the newcomer, the star of 2019 on the gravel scene, Sarah Max, she's been on fire. Uh, second at Belgian Waffle third at Dirty Kanza and second, no, third at the Crusher. Um, so she's just been on fire and uh, has really adapted well to, to doing gravel. So that's been really cool to see uh, kind of that newcomer break on the scene and kind of be like the, the rookie of the year, I guess. Call the oh, rookie of the year. The yeah, Grodio sure. rookie of the year. <laughs> yeah, because she said after Dirty Kanza, I saw her Instagram post was something like, I didn't even know what Dirty Kanza was a year ago. And so I think that's cool to see that the event inspired or the even the discipline inspired somebody like her to come out and just absolutely crush it um i raced her i was in the lead at the beginning of belgian waffle ride and she was she sarah sturm had passed me and then sarah max came up and i was like man she is just climbing up this hill way faster than me and i would descend back to her on like the gravel descent before the next giant climb and she just like took off like i wasn't even trying so i was i'm really impressed with the way that she rides especially climbs so i wasn't really that surprised to see her get third at crusher so um yeah she's definitely a force to be reckoned with and really cool to see her do a lot of these big events even like in her first year tackling this discipline yeah, for sure. I, I'm excited to see like who next year's rookie of the year is because yeah. I think, like you said, you know, more and more people are getting inspired um, to do this. And as we established on, if you haven't listened to episode four of Grodio, um, we recorded that 
a totally different time. Um, but we were talking about how, you know, the, the women's field seems to really attract people who are just committed to doing gravel. Uh, and so we get to know them a little bit better uh, as they do more of these events. So I'm excited to see. Um, so that's your top 10. Uh, Sir Max, Amity Rockwell, Rebecca Ferringer, The Panda, Amanda Nauman, uh, Kedria Nash, Amy Charity, Kai Takashida, Serena Gordon, Evelyn Dong, and Alison Tetrick. So we'll see what happens. We've got three more races uh, that we have our eye on coming up in August and early September. So we'll have one, probably one last Grodio power ranking uh, f- before the end of the season. So oh, yeah. for the women. Yeah, for sure. Not, not maybe, but for sure. You still have okay. a bunch of big it's events. Happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, even it's happening. If, yeah. Mid September, you're going to come out with a, a pretty good update. All right, cool. Uh, so that's your women. Uh, do you want to do the men? Sounds good. All right. I'm excited to be on this side where I get to, to comment and stroke my chin and <laughs> why wonder, <laughs> wonder who why. came up with half of these rankings. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right. Um, so in 10th place, I have Mr. Jeremiah Bishop. I gave him some love for tackling an event like Hilly Billy Roubaix um, because I thought that, you know, it has a little bit less prestige than, than some of these bigger events that we're doing. But at the same time, he also did Dirty Kanza. Um, I remember like at the first maybe 10 miles or so of Dirty Kanza, I was riding behind Jeremiah and I was like, are you right? Is it? I was like, Jeremiah, are you riding a road bike? And he was like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, All oh, right. Wow. I was like, All right, good luck. <laughs> that was all I said. Like, that was our whole conversation the entire day. Um, yeah. So it's kind of cool to see somebody like him do these like totally different events. I mean, he can go and win New York Grand Fondo at the same time and, and also win Hilly Billy Roubaix. So it's cool to see people like him come into this and kind of shake things up. So I gave him the 10th place spot. Um, in ninth, I have Alex Grant. He finished first at Crusher and the Tusher, and he's, I'm pretty sure, won it um, in the past multiple times. It's kind of his thing to go win. So while he doesn't really break out of the mold of just doing Crusher and doing some of the other stuff, um, it is impressive that he comes out and against all the big names that come out and do some of the other um, alternative racing events, he will still come and win Crusher. Um, no problem. So I gave him ninth. And hold on a sec. I, I don't. I hate to do this. Yes. Um, it was actually his first win in six tries. Was it? Yeah, he finished third last year. He had like all the worst luck. Who was um, the other flats. guy from? There's somebody else from Utah that keeps winning it, wasn't it? Like Rob, Rob Squire. You're ah, thinking of Rob Squire. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, Alex was a great story. He was, I taught when I interviewed him, he was just like you could tell it meant a lot to him, and that's really cool and fun. Oh, okay. But. Um. Yeah. Now I know. I sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, d- I didn't want to have to like jump in there, but yeah, his story was kind of cool. So. Okay. Well, that makes it even better than the than yeah, he deserves it's a better story. More. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So in eighth, I have Tristan Yule. He finished fifth uh, at that Oregon stage race. He was also a tenth at Dirty Kanza, which I found very impressive because he's also the same guy that can go and win. Uh, like the. The Fat Tire Crit at an epic race. He did that last year and really surprised me um, and shows up to cross races and does really well as well. So um, fifth at that Oregon race kind of bumped him up for me. Um, And a tenth is a very respectable, silent, dirty Kanza place. So I think that still carried some love for me. So he's an eighth. Yeah, Um, well, and uh, I've heard heard that you're a fan of mustaches. (laughs) Yeah, true. Uh, And he has a dope mustache. He does, yeah. (laughs) I, I don't know if how that counts for the rankings, but uh, maybe that maybe that like secretly helped him, you know bump him up Perhaps. in this thing. Yeah. But no, no, he was super strong. I mean, like at mile one hundred, he was still in the chase group. Yeah. Uh, that was chasing after Colin Strickland once he went away, and you yeah. look around and you see, you know, EF, EF, Trek Segafredo, uh, Ted King, Josh Berry, and you know Tristan Yule was right there. Um, so he is he's a strong dude on the endurance scene for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and it, yeah, it's cool. I mean, he also does some cross, so I'm a little biased, but um, you should pretty, be. yeah, pretty good to see him do have these events or these results this year is pretty awesome. Um, 
In seventh, I have Peter Stetna. He showed up this year and kind of made his name known during Belgian Waffle Ride, and I think that carried over some love for me, his placing at Dirty Kanza. He hasn't done any of these four events uh, since then. I'm pretty sure he was at the Dauphiné, so, you know, no big deal. But um, <laughs> he he's seventh on the rankings for me. And in sixth, I have Colin Strickland, uh, kind of the same scenario. He hasn't done too much since Dirty Kanza besides a 10th at Oregon. Um, but, I mean, he won Dirty Kanza, so to me that carried some weight. He, I watched the um, Tulsa and the Tough live stream, or the, the Tulsa Tough, the crit, whatever. He did really well there. Like, he went on a flyer at some point. It was off the front of the race, and everybody on Twitter was like, oh my god, he could win Dirty Kanza and also crush crits. And it's like, yeah, well... If you followed him since before Dirty Kanza, he was doing that no matter what. <laughs> um, well, I think that's one thing that was, uh, I kind of retroactively went back and looked at the Twitter chatter <laughs> yeah. from DK when I was at the at the dorm. Uh, but all these people were like, who is Colin Strickland? Who is Colin Strickland? And you know, anyone, anyone who had ever seen Colin Strickland la- race was like, yeah, we get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I was, you know, Brad Soner, like, follows all the crits. It's just like, this dude is... Str- and he loves putting... He's like, I love putting on a show. And so that was probably why he went on a flyer at Tulsa Tough, is, you know, he'll make sure that you know that he's at an event. Yes, um, yeah. He'll make sure is, you say, who's that guy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I think we all know him now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so he's awesome obviously established name so i gave him some weight for dirty kanza um i was kind of surprised he got 10th at the oregon i don't know the whole story there but um maybe he's just not that great of a climber compared to some of the other guys but um in fifth i have barry wicks i am still a very big uh fan of his escapades in cyclocross back in the day and it's awesome to see him doing some of these different events and finishing third at Oregon, I thought was a pretty big thing for me to see him do that. So that was awesome. He also had a really good finish at Lost and Found. So he's still doing some of these big mountain events that kind of suit his style of riding now compared to back in the day when he was doing some more XC and cross. So I gave him some love, put him in fifth place. Um, in fourth, I have Alex Howes. He finished third at Crusher, pretty much third at Dirty Kanza, third, fourth. <laughs> um, and yeah, he, I mean, if you want to throw in nationals, he kind of won that as well. This, these are the Grodio rankings, so he is obviously on some really good form this year and so it's cool to see him come and do these different events but also also show at the same time that he can go win such a massive road race uh and put his name in the list of guys that can wear the stars and stripes as well for for usa cycling so it's pretty cool to see him do that um it was really fun to read his story from dirty kanza and that that really resonated with me as his first time attempt at it and be able to come away with it with uh, that kind of emotional piece that a lot of people come away with for the first time of doing the event. Um, And that really stuck with me and it was awesome to see him do so well in some of these other things later down the road. I was hoping he was going to win Crusher, uh, but it was cool to see him get third. I mean, the altitude's kind of a kick in the face. So Yeah, it was... Oh, um... Yeah, it's been kind of interesting with like uh, the World Tour folks because uh, I know they all felt a lot of pressure uh, coming into to Dirty Kanza to be like, "Are you doing it the right way?" Yeah, Do you, you know, yeah. Uh, I don't want to offend I, anyone. But to see them after the race and just see the camaraderie, uh, you know, they all like top like fifteen people all just hung out at the finish and were just like enjoying and sharing stories and like you said, it seems like they did kind not not get it, but it seems like they really appreciated just how hard Dirty Kanza is. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, I and loved. the experience. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been cool to see, see them embrace it. And for, you know, a guy like Alex to, to keep, to keep his, his growed season going by doing crusher, which is a totally different beast. Um, I was curious though. I, I, I joked about it in my preview is whether or not he would have the stars and stripes. And if you're allowed to wear a road <laughs> stars and stripes <laughs> no, for gravel. <laughs> 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 he did not for the record uh, oh. i think he just got it but yeah. uh i was kind of joking about that and you know because people like to talk about what we're gonna have like 
gravel nationals or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, an honorable mention is Lachlan Morton and his GB Duro Ultra Racing event. I don't know if you watched that video that they put out, but it's pretty awesome. Um, and it's cool to see EF do that alternative racing calendar and kind of put their guys in these different very different race scenarios and what they're normally used to um, and kind of confirm the fact that it's an area that sponsors see value in um, and it kind of gives some validation to the discipline in itself so it's awesome to see those guys come to some of these events um, yeah and third I have Mr. Carl Decker he finished first at the Oregon stage race which is, in my opinion, very respectable with that list of guys that have signed up. Um, I mean, it's. I'm curious to see how he would have done at Dirty Kanza. At the same time, I don't know if that's an event that he would want to do compared to something like Lost and Found. It seems like he's more of that mountain climbing style of rider. Um, but yeah, it was cool to see him come away with the win there. I mean, especially edging out Josh Berry, to, in my opinion, that's like a huge deal. So it's cool to see him, you know, I, he's not necessarily the youngest guy anymore either. So I gave him some love for being kind of that old man strength as well. So he gets bronze. Um, Here's a question for you. Yeah. Um, should Lost and Found and Dirty Kanza be on different days? I... I heard you guys talk about that. I don't know because even if even if you spread it out one weekend difference, how many people would really want to do Lost and Found before Dirty Kanza or vice versa? Like either one of those you're risking the result of the other. So I don't know if it's ever going to be something that they can figure out to do separately. Number 1, I don't think Lost and Found cares and number 2, I don't think Dirty Kanza cares either. Because those people are going to show up to those events no matter what. Um, but yeah, I'm, it, it does suck because you're like, I wish we could just combine the fields and do them both at both. But yeah, I don't know if it's going to happen ever, but it, it is interesting to see that. Especially because they're totally different races. One's a lot of climbing and one's, you know, a completely longer event, maybe similar climbing, but it's spread out over 12, 13 hours. <laughs> um can so, I ask yeah. you another another question to put you on the spot? Am I allowed to do that? Uh, so you've won DK twice, and Amity won DK, and right after the race, like she's like, I might do Lost and Found next year, because uh, I like that kind of thing. Should she come back and defend her Dirty Kanza title? I do think she should. Uh, I think defending is kind of an obligation, whether or not that's you know something that's written, but at the same time. She has even said to me before, I really like big mountain stuff, um, so I can't, I can't blame her for wanting to do something that she actually loves. Her style, she claims that she doesn't enjoy the Midwest rolling pure gravel in the sun style of racing as much as she does li like climbing mountains and descending like a madman, so um, yeah, I can't fault her for that. I wish she would stay and try and defend, but yeah, I don't know, I'll... I'll try and send her a message and let her know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told her as much. I mean, I think she she clearly does very well, though. Like, as she said, her long game is very good. Like, she just can pedal her bike yeah. for... Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I think there's something... I, I, I was making the argument. I think, like, you win it. It's cool to have the defending champs get, you know, nameplate, number plate one and two. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Or in the case of Alison Tetrick gets two, she's number one uh, at Gravel Worlds, like yeah. she did last year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to have those those defending champs come back, and I think that's a, a cool aspect of the start line. Yeah, um, for sure. It makes it, yeah, it's a different storyline to have. I mean, even if, you know, not very many other people are putting predictions out there like you might be, it, it, it plays a... A different card to be able to be like oh this person won last year how are they going to do the following year i mean that's something that ted's had to deal with something that rebecca rush has had to deal with in a lot of these bigger events um so it is kind of fun and like defending something is something that's a little bit honorable to you know make a name for yourself and kind of defend that title that you've worked hard for in the year before yeah so amity if you're listening we love you 
uh, our message. Please do dirty kids come back. <laughs> and if you if you want to do Lost and Found in 2021, you can just totally bag DK. Yeah, finish exactly. Second. Just, just bag it. it. Finish yeah. second. Just Don't do win. It for fun next year. <laughs> Don't win. Uh, and just you're off show the hook up with and the then... number one play. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's been decided. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So number three, Carl Decker. Number two, I have Mr. Eddie Anderson. He is unfortunately or fortunately the king of second place he was second at crusher and second at belgian waffle ride um i thought it was his battle with stetton at bwr was pretty cool to hear about and it was kind of you know the old man putting in the dig at the end at double peak that that uh put him in second place so i didn't really hear about that battle that put him in second at crusher i don't know if it was something that was very decisive or if he was like kind of sitting in second all day Um, but he's, you know, still a young kid, has a really bright future ahead of him, and it's kind of fun to see him do well at these different, you know, events than he's used to, um, but yeah, I mean, he's super talented, he flatted really early at Belgian Waffle Ride, which isn't something that a lot of people talked about, but his ability to just, like, ride back up to the front group like it wasn't anything was probably the most impressive part of that day, and had he not had to do that um I mean he probably could have put Stetna in a different position towards the end so um yeah I gave him second I would like to see him do some more of these style events just because I think he's so talented um and so it's kind of my push to be like Eddie keep doing these (laughs) he's Um, on the Grodio power rankings now he made his Grodio power ranking debut exactly silver dude's he's got to do more right it's it's science (laughs) yeah um (laughs) Yeah, and then my gold medal uh, this time around goes to Josh Berry, which is kind of an interesting pick. He is one of those guys that does more of these style events, uh, and I picked him because he's done some of the events that are not necessarily bigger names, but he kind of puts himself in some more grassroots stuff as well and does really well, but I like that he gives the love to some of the smaller events Uh, He finished second in Oregon, which was really impressive because of that field that showed up there. Um, And he, I think, top 10 at Dirty Kanza, maybe like seventh or so. He was in that group of guys that was just chasing all the World Tour, X World Tour slash Payson group. Um, And to me, that was really impressive. He got second last year, and so it it was fun to see somebody really defend that silver that he had last year against a field that was also really um, strong at Dirty Kanza this year. So I think that's a not controversial, but, you know, I gave him first in the rankings for this time around because second in Oregon against that field was pretty awesome. Yeah, and I, I, I've, I've been struck by just... Uh, well, Josh, he's a former, like, junior cyclocross, went to Europe, yeah, did the Eurocross camp thing, so he's it. a crosser. <laughs> um, but no, I've just been struck by how nice of a dude he is, um, and he just seems to... Like, the story that I told on uh, the previous episode of Grodio is on Sunday morning after awards, I just kind of, like, rolled back down uh, Commercial Street through Emporia, <laughs> and uh, Josh had his, his plaque or whatever, because, you know, he was he went to the awards ceremony and was probably like up there in his age group oh yeah yeah. (laughs) he was just like yeah he was just like wearing sunglasses flip-flops just rolling into the bar at 9 a.m no big deal it's the day (laughs) after dk so uh he's a fun guy uh and really chill and like you said he's he's super strong as well so yeah yeah for sure and he is part of also that crowd that i think uh represents that spirit of this kind of racing for me because he's so laid back and he just does this stuff for fun and you know, while he does these longer gravel events, he's also racing XC for, like, the giant factory team. So, you know, I mean, he can show up at Sea Otter and do an XC race at the same token as all this other stuff. So it's pretty cool to see him do this well. Uh, he's currently in Mammoth, which is a place that is close to my heart, and he's training and doing some of those big gravel rides out there that I do a lot. Um, and so I know he's probably got Idaho on his sights for the future, And it'll be interesting to see how some of these later um, gravel events like SBT and Rebecca's Private Idaho come and play and throw all these rankings (laughs) uh, for a loop in the next month or so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it'll be fun next year um, to try to have like kind of track the Grodio power rankings, you know, because we jumped in at the beginning of the year or the middle of the year this year. Yeah. Uh, But, you know, next year to 
who knows, maybe even start with like Texas Chain Ring Massacre oh, and some of those super early ones, yeah. but definitely Land Run to see how it uh, how it changes over the the year and who's doing well and who does. It's interesting to see, you know, we talk about we have like kind of West Coast style events and then Midwest events, you know, who does well where. Uh, it's all very interesting. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in gravel, and it's not super cut and dry uh, in terms of who's going to win. And it seems like that's a super fun part of of doing this. Yeah, for sure. It the, that that unknown. It's like a, you know, you watch a lot of these events, even the Tour de France this year. In the past, it's always been so we knew who was going to win, and it made it a lot less exciting. And I think the fact that this year it's been a completely unknown race and anything can happen that's what's made it so fun and i think that's the same thing with some of these other events is the the fact that it's unpredictable is like the best part of it so one thing that i think is interesting i'm just looking at i do have a spreadsheet but there aren't as many numbers in it as yours i i think we still ended up with uh between the two of us like 18 of the same like people in the top 10 so kind of interesting that we (laughs) came at it a little bit different uh maybe disagreed i think on the order a little bit more for the women um but still kind of interesting uh yeah. between our, our joint power ranking effort there is some co- consensus so you can blame both of us in a way <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> no just kidding just kidding you can blame me uh, uh amanda's the best and so you can just like all complaints can be directed to me oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean i'm curious to see it, uh, like if people enjoy this as much as i do because i love this discipline i love the fact that there's like anything can happen and these events are all so different and equipment is different tire choice bike choice it's all such a crapshoot and i think that's such a fun part of it um and even in the rankings you're like anything can happen because some people show up and some people don't and um it's pretty cool so maybe next year in like january you should come out with here are what our Grodio rankings will be based off of. And then you can like create your own series of people are going to go do these events because they want to be in the Grodio rankings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think like you said on our previous episode, uh, let's put another plug in for episode four of the Grodio podcast. You know, you said that there probably will be, uh, there is a series emerging uh, and it seems like, uh, you know, if not officially, it seems like there are these events that are the bigger the bigger events that are attracting, you know, some of the same people. Uh, so I think that's cool. I think it creates like it seems like there is some sense of narrative to the to the gravel season that we've had big events in, you know, March, May, June, July, and then we'll have some in August. So uh, I think it's cool. Uh, I guess we need a big we need, well we need a big one in April and there's Barry Roubaix, uh, which has started to attract more and more of kind of like the bigger names but um, yeah it's kind of cool uh, that there's kind of like this this summer long narrative to the gravel season that's yeah been fun for to watch. sure I mean because even just take Barry Roubaix for example it's short it's very fast compared to something like Dirty Kanza for example that's probably quadruple the length of that so it's fun to see how everybody shakes up you know, in these different events and somebody who shows up to one and wins Dirty Kanza, for example, like, is he worth as much as everybody, like the guys that show up and do, you know, six out of these 10 races or something. So yeah, it's fun. (laughs) So what you're saying is that I can't just make shit up next year. I'm going to have to come up with some sort of coherent uh, methodology. I mean, the engineer in me says, yeah, because somebody (laughs) like me is going to be like, explain yourself. (laughs) Well, see, this is what happens. You know, I have a degree in engineering, but then you go into being a journalist and you're just like, it's just words. I just make stuff up. So uh, that's my excuse. Yeah, (laughs) that's fine. That's fine. You know more than anyone else, so it's okay. Uh, Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on. This has been super fun uh, to get to do the the second ever Grodio Power Rankings with you and have your inputs. And, um, you know, uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that we had there was some sense of consensus uh, in terms of where we're at and who's doing well and all that fun stuff. So. Yeah, for sure. Next time we're going to have to have Bill on and see what the noob has to think about all of this. Ooh, the, Bill the noob. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, well, cool. Well, uh, Grodio, we're, we're through five episodes. I'm surprised we've made it this far, um, but we are part of the Wide Angle Podium. Uh, you can find all episodes at wideanglepodium.com. And on your favorite uh, podcast listening source, I think uh, this is part of the parts bin. We're still in the parts bin. So uh, that's kind of like new ideas, although we've got five episodes and with uh, it sounds like we're on the hook for sure for six and seven. uh, And we may have you back on. Would you be interested? Oh, yeah. At least to give my comments from the peanut gallery for sure. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, so it sounds like we might ma- eventually make our way out of uh, out of the parts bin into being a regular thing. Um, but again, Amanda, the pan- I, I've got to ask, like the panda thing, like did that? I mean, I'm guessing it started because of your name. Is that true? Or if, like, are you just a big panda fan and it worked out that your name was Amanda? Oh, Zach, I'm going to call you out because you've already asked me this question before. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I had a friend in high school that was half Mexican and I'm half Asian. And so she just one day, because we were on the swim team together, called me Amanda Panda and it just kind of stuck. And yeah, it was something catchy for racing bikes and, you know, it just kind of stuck. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I apologize. Um, it, but it seems like it's <laughs> caught on. I mean, I don't know, like somehow the file photo that we have of you is now just a panda. I don't know oh, how perfect. that happened. So it's just like, it's totally caught on, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it works. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Um, I really appreciate all the support that you give to to everyone who's out there uh, putting stuff out on the internet and uh, in terms of media and stuff. I pre- really appreciate uh, that you support uh, what we do. So thank you. Uh, and it, yeah. Yeah, no problem. I mean, it wouldn't. Uh, what I do is impossible without somebody you know, talking about it. And the media is a big part of this circus that we follow and and enjoy so i really appreciate what you do and i'm happy to help whenever i can so thanks for having me awesome this has been grodio uh we'll see you guys next time in about a month (laughs) take care all right thanks